welcome everybody. It is the time for the June virtual event. I'm Tim Gillette, your host, and this is the Simple Easy Events monthly virtual event here in June of 2021. Now, we're trying to do a very interesting concept this month to help you understand that you need to have multiple ways to market your business. Now, everything we do and help with everything we work with to help you is about online marketing. Today's speakers are going to use a very simple th thing to market themselves that can be done online or offline. The very task is about helping you to learn to share your business if you are given a 15-minute time frame to speak. Now imagine at the last minute you're told, hey, you can speak at this event for 15 minutes. Go. Do you have a topic? Do you have a subject? Do you have something that you can do to actually work to be successful? Hmm. I want you to think about that. You're given a 15-minute time frame. If you're not organized enough, you can waste 12 of them before you realize, oh, crap. I, I, I don't have half my points out. You see the timer float in front of you where the timer goes, five minutes left, two minutes left, one minute left, and yet you're going, man, I haven't got all my stuff at all. The idea of simple, easy talks is designed for you to actually come up with a format that you can actually convey a message enough to get people to want to follow with, up with you and get more. Now, this is not designed because we want to compete with whatever fancy talks are out there, all right, in a 10-minute, 20-minute talk, all right? What are they called? Uh, you know what I mean? Something talks or, you know, the 15-minute talk. Everybody has a thing with their brand and why they're calling it a talk to actually make the talk the marketing thing. Simple Easy Talks is not about building a conference around actually everybody coming in and doing a Simple Easy Talk. No, it is another marketing tool to help you learn to market your business if you only have a short piece of time, you have it organized, you have it down, you have a system that will get you results every time. Now, the Simple Easy Talk is just that, all right? Number one, it is simple and easy. It is designed to be 15 minutes long. The idea around 15 minutes is it is built that way to help you to realize you have a time frame to be able to get your message out. Number two, it is organized. It's an organized fashion. In other words, you make three points, not five, not seven, not 10, not 24, three. Now, when I share mine today, actually my system that I'm going to share with you today actually has seven points, but I'm going to highlight three of them. Something my coach taught me to do. Then we actually tell people 10 slides. Now, we don't make the 10-slide rule just to make people, well, you only can do it in 10 slides. No, I want you to learn to be able to convey your message without having to have a, a multiple slides up, all right, and being able to convey your, your slides up there to get your message across faster. Now, Simple Easy, we also, I mean, we didn't make this requirement for it, but simply one of the things that we do in our Simple Easy system is use only one subject per slide. One phrase, one comment, one thing to actually keep the audience focused on what you're saying, not what's on the slide. It is also designed to be a 15-minute talk explaining to people how to do something. Not saying, hey, this is my system, all right, come buy from me. But no, this is how to do something. A smart and wise and very efficient marketer will take that 15-minute talk and teach people, this is how you do something in my niche. You follow step A, you follow step B, you follow step C, and this is what you look for when you want to actually hire someone who can help you with whatever your niche is. The keys to actually making this work is you, when giving that talk, are going to share the things to the audience to make them Take their piece of paper and pencil out and start writing a checklist of things that they need to know when they hire 
someone who does what you do. Here's the key. You've got to research and find out what others are doing. There's a reason why I taught blogging, but yet I have bought well over 100 blogging courses. Because what I teach in blogging, no one else does. Most of what I teach in blogging, some people do. But there's always one, maybe two aspects of what I teach that I tell people, you need to follow, you need to connect with people, and you need to make sure the people you follow in blogging do this. And I always have one to two that only I do. You see, in a simple, easy talk, in the 15-minute talks you give, you want to give people a checklist so that they can actually go down and go, well, yep, uh, yep, 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 yep. So then when they investigate everybody else but you, they can't find that checklist to get the results they go. And after all, they heard you say, follow this checklist. What that does is it always makes them circle back when it's time to hire the person to get the results. They come back and who do they hire? You. So you see, Simple Easy Talks was designed around the idea that you actually share your information and inform the people about your niche, your industry, what you do to help people, all right? But then you make sure that the informative information always leads back to you without you saying, come hire me. But then you give them a call to action, a freebie which is something we have done on our all of our simple, easy uh, virtual events, is every one of our speakers has a free offer, something they give. Some cases, it's just, hey, get the slides from today so you actually have this notes for your presentation. In some cases, it says, hey, get my, report, my, my free report on the seven ways to do whatever. The point is, you always have a call to action in the Simple Easy Talk because the call to action is where you're going to get the people who are going to come check you out. And that's the first step along the way to them hiring you. A Simple Easy Talk is designed for you to actually speak so that people can get to know you. Give them information so they can learn to trust you. Give a call to action so they will buy from you. It makes it simple and easy, but it's a talk. Speaking is not something I teach. I don't teach speaking because all, after all, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I am not the best speaker in the world. I know a lot of you guys love me and think I do great things. It's because I help you. I'm not helping, and my helping you is not because I'm a great speaker. I was fortunate enough to actually, the person who got me into the speaking industry was the legend, Zig Ziglar. But I am not Zig Ziglar. I never will be Zig Ziglar. I will never model Zig Ziglar, all right? I will never try to be a Zig Ziglar speaker. I'm Tim Gillette. And the things I had to learn throughout my life and why I built Simple Easy Marketing was... Anything and everything I've ever done in life was because I actually broke it down into simple, easy steps, bite-sized steps, and took it one step at a time. That is how I was successful in everything I've done since I was 10 years old. That is why we actually create all these different things for you guys to learn and get to know and use the same principles that we've done to help you be successful. Today, we're going to share with you, we have one, two, three, four, four different uh, 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 people who are going to share with you about uh, a, a little bit of information about their industry. They're going to give a call to action. They're going to actually give you some place to go get a free report or a free article or a free something from them. They're going to share with you information that is going to make you go, okay, I understand what I need to look for when I hire someone like them. Number one, I want you to listen to the information because number one, the information they're sharing today is very valuable and it's going to help you build your business. Number two, I want you to watch the formats they use in speaking because the formats they use in speaking, they're professional at what they do and they're going to convey their message in a limited amount of time 
and make you want to, number one, learn from them. Number two, want to get to know more about them. They became speakers about their business because they wanted to get more business. Not because they wanted to be speakers and well-known and become the next Zig Ziglar. No. They took speaking as a revenue way to actually get people to understand what they do and how they help people. And in some cases, speaking became the actual framework to get that. As in my case, I am a speaker first. I am a coach second. Our speakers today, all right, we've got Scott Schilling's going to teach you some stuff on sales. Uh, Brian Wright, all right, great concept. Brian, actually, same concept we do, all right, getting taking your podcast and turning them into books. Joe Dechar is going to talk about taxes, all right, and being stealth in the tax things and actually helping keep more money. Luana Parker is going to share with you more about being your legacy, all right, and connecting with you. I know each one of the four people who are going to share with you, as well as me, I'm going to share with you my simple, easy system for creating content, even if you've got nothing. So how to use other people's content, other people's audiences, and build yours. I know the speakers that are here today, each one of them personally. And I know they do what they teach. That's why they're on our stage. When you actually learn to do what you teach, you're going to get invited to more stages to share your information, your wisdom, your knowledge to help people get the results they want, not selling your program that you want. I hope today's thing is becomes very informative to, you, informative to you. If you are watching this live, all right, thank you for showing up live. All right, I know many of you watch the replay. All right, I want to hear from you. At the end of the day, I'm going to give a keyword that actually you can actually say in when you e email me to actually say, hey, this is the keyword I learned. I love doing that. I've done it in my some of my other videos online. I put a little word at the end and say, hey, when you respond, tell me this word. That way I can tell who watched the videos, who watched. If you're in the simple, easy virtual membership, you have lifetime access to these things. Lifetime. A one-time membership got you in. We do it every month because we give $10 of the 20 from every new person who comes in and joins the membership. We give that 10 of that 20 to the charity. This month, again, we just happen to be raising money again for Get Shift Done. However, if every any month you actually see or find value in these things enough, click the link on the page to get shift done. I think it's I think timgillette.com slash uh, shift. I'm, I'm gonna have to go check that. But anyway, it's it's but this is like say thanks, all right, to our speakers at any point in time by going to get shift done.org and donate it. We don't know how much you donate. We don't even get a record of it on this one here. Uh, we just love the organization so much. And it's a way for you to continue to say thanks to the speakers. You're not required to. 10 of the $20 when you join this membership actually went to them to begin with. And we always say, give extra. Help them out. They're actually doing a good cause for us. And we're actually doing good things to help them. So, of course, I want to tell you. Let us see who actually comes in here. It's Melissa. I have not seen you in forever, Melissa. I am so glad that you have actually found our... Uh, found our, 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 our group finally and got in here because I know you've been a longtime member. You just didn't get in to get your membership. All right. Robert, one of our most faithful attendees. We love Robert. He is a great guy up there in Canada. Appreciate you for coming in, Robert. All right. Good morning to you. So uh, those checklists are handy, he says, and that is an absolute bargain for sure. Thank you, Robert, for all of that. And the other thing today is I'm going to tell you, say thanks to those people, the sponsors who make this thing possible. Uh, this month, the sponsors are listed out there. Uh, uh, live streaming, live stream universes uh, get mon are monetized live streaming now. Go check out with Ross Brand and his good people. Joe Pardo, uh, independent uh, podcasters, are independent, actually independent creators now, I think they're calling it, is a great community of people who are creative online. They're independent. Uh, they're building a business independent. Joe will not be with us today physically because Joe just had his eye surgery, his LASIK eye surgery. So next time we see Joe, he probably won't have these things on anymore. A uh, good thing there. Uh, and then lastly, we want to thank Larry Roberts, all right, and the guys, the, the folks over at Readily Random for doing all of our video work, breaking up and editing those videos for us, as well as being a faithful partner to us 
uh, and, and sponsorship over the past 12 months. We appreciate Larry and all he has done for us. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I actually have noticed that down in the green room is our first speaker of the day. This gentleman, all right, is someone who I have known for probably 10 years, I think. Maybe more. I think it's 10 years we've known each other. I met this gentleman by one day walking into a coffee shop and running into someone, another speaker I knew who said, by the way, you need to meet this guy. And while I have not talked to Judy in ages, I still know her. I still love her, still connect with her. All right. This guy and I have a conversation probably at least once every two or three months. We sit down and talk. We've been doing that for the past 10 years, introducing people to, to people we know. All right. And we have found that over the past 10 years that our audiences and our connections have grown and grown and grown together. And we all seem to know so many people together that we didn't know we knew. And we're always introducing the people we know to each other. It's weird because we just want to connect the world with good people. This guy is one of the one of the greatest. All right. He is. He's a mentor to me, has spoken at my conferences before. It's his first time on the virtual conference. All right. And I know he has another one to go to after this. He's a busy man, just like me. But he's going to come in here and share with you some sales. Mr. Scott Schilling. How are you, buddy? I'm fabulous. Wow. That, uh, <laughs> I'm humbled. <laughs> nice introduction. That's awesome. And it is. It has been about 10 years and I haven't talked to Judy either. <laughs> yeah, I miss. I mean, no, I, I've gotten a lot of wisdom from Judy, but like, you know, it was yeah. a connection we made. And maybe that's the connection that we needed. We needed to connect with her so we can connect with each other. Maybe that's why. I don't know. It's the way it works. Yeah, you're only is. you're only one person away. Yep. Yep. So, Scott, are you going to share slides today or are you just going to give us your wisdom? You know what? Uh, you know, I just hope people have a pad of paper and, and a pen or a pencil and get ready to take some notes. And and um, I'm not going to let you cheat and look back up there and hear what I said. Just listen and write it down. <laughs> well, sir, I'm going to put you on the clock for 15 minutes. All right. Go ahead and go. Yeah. And I'll be back. I'm right here. If you just need me, just call. All right. Will do. Well, thank you, everybody, for the opportunity. Certainly thank Tim for the opportunity to be here today. We're going to talk a little bit about sales and, and sales and networking, uh, which are very much in the same thing, believe it or not. Sometimes it's really funny. I, I train sales forces and they say, well, what can I possibly learn from you? I've been doing this forever. You can learn a lot because I've been doing it forever and I learn a lot all the time. And then sometimes I train in the holistic disciplines and you know, well, I'm a chiropractor, I'm not a sales guy. Uh, if you're not a sales guy, you don't have a business. Uh, you, gotta, you gotta get patience, right? So let me demystify selling first for everybody. The fact is selling is simply the exchange of a product, good or service for an amount of money or its equivalent. Now, sometimes get people people get hung up on the money side of it. That's the you know the holistic hug, tree hugger, love them. Uh, but again, you can't have a, a practice if you don't collect money. So instead, let, let's reframe it. First of all, that it's the exchange of a product, good, or service for something that makes you feel good. It makes your heart sing. Well, that's a pretty good start, right? Well, I actually created my heart centered selling definition of training of sales. And that is education through communication without manipulation. Now it reframes you as a teacher and everybody loves their teachers because their teachers are investing in them. So this is really about educating the prospect on the features, advantages and benefits that your products, goods and services offer that satisfy their needs, wants, and desires. By the way, there were three triads there when Tim was talking about speakers utilizing proven techniques to get people to remember things. Triads were one of those things. So again, we share our features, advantages, and benefits to satisfy needs, wants, and desires through the delivery of our products, goods, and services. Now, again, every once in a while, somebody will say, Scott, I am just not sales and, and everything isn't about sales. Okay, a pretty dramatic statement. I'd expect you to make me prove it. Okay, prove it. Okay, I will. How many of you have ever been on a date? You made a sale. How many of you have ever put a kid to bed? You made a sale. 
How many of you are married? <laughs> You're better at this than you think. I mean, look at the product, right? The, the, the whole point is selling is nothing more than communicating a position for somebody else to consider. In other words, Tim was sharing earlier about, you know, how wonderful Brian Wright is and, and repurposing content and doing different things. Well, he was presenting a concept for your consideration to accept. It's actually a sale. Now, no, no exchange of finances there, but an exchange of value. Understand that selling is really about exchanging value and you can always give somebody more value than they give you and you have a successful sale. So again, there's three absolutes in any presentation and anything that happens. In this short period of time that I have, I want to leave, leave you with those for your consideration. The first is W-I-I-F-T. What's in it for them? You've got to come from a place of others orientation. It's got to be about them, their needs, their wants, their desires, not yours. Tim and I both come out of the Ziegler camp, I'm honored to have known Zig and spent time with him and, and learned so much from him. At 17 years of age, I read See You at the Top, and there was a quote in that book that forever changed my life. You can have everything in life you want when you simply help enough other people get what they want. Do you understand the positioning? It's a what's in it for them mentality. You have to walk a mile in their shoes. You have to understand what their challenges are. People make selling way too hard. It's actually four words. Identify, problem, provide, solution. That's it. If there is no problem, there's no need for a solution. So how many times do people in certain industries and their tail is wagging so hard, they are so excited about their new product, good, or service that they go to, you know, a friend or a, a family member. You need to have this. Well, I don't have that problem. So therefore, I don't need to have it. Now, I might purchase it to support you, but that doesn't really create this ongoing repeat customer type business. So stop trying to get people who don't want what you got to buy it. It doesn't make any sense. I said this yesterday on a radio show I was doing. One of the proudest things on my 2,500 different stage appearances where basically I was selling a product, $4,000. My return rate, my, my total return rate over a five-year period was three-tenths of one percent. Somebody said, well, that's, that's almost impossible to do that. How, how did you accomplish that? The answer is simple. Don't sell things to people who don't need your things because they'll become dissatisfied. Don't think short-term. This is long tail. This is long tail relationships, like Tim was saying about he and I. It's a long tail relationship. So the first thing is what's in it for them? You gotta come from others orientation. The second absolute, absolute. People do business with those they know, like, and trust. It's an absolute. So go into the situation, if you don't know this person, go into it with this assumption. If they don't know you, they don't like you. They don't know you. How can they like you? And if they don't like you, how can they trust you? They can't trust you because they don't like you. And they've got to know and like you to trust you. And if they don't trust you, they will not do business with you. Period. Now, you might be able to jam a sale down their throat by having the lowest price in town one time.
but you haven't gained any customer loyalty. You haven't gained anything that will repeat. And you're going to just burn through a whole bunch of marketplace with a whole bunch of effort. Why would you want to do that? It's much more fun to have your customers call you and say, hey, Scott, can I order something from you today? Ah, sure. Let me think about that. Okay. You know how much easier that is? So, again, we, we first have to get and develop no. You have to get people to know us. It's one of the reasons, quite frankly, that Tim edified me prior to me coming on. It first introduces you to me, in case you haven't known me, and he shares some of the reasons that he knows me. Well, then, because he said something very nice about, well, we get together, you know, every month, every couple months, we have conversations, we do this, we exchange leads to each other. That was a very nice way to say, he kind of likes me, and I kind of like him. But what it really came down to is the edification was the transfer of trust from somebody you trust, or you wouldn't be here. You trust Tim, and because Tim trusts me, ultimately we leverage some of that trust to me. And so now we're working down the no like, and trust portion of this. You have to trust the person that you purchase something for, or you won't make that purchase. And you certainly won't go back again. It's just that simple. And then the third piece is the, the one that most people forget about. And that is people take action when they're ready. Not when you're ready. Let that sink in for a second. People take action when you're ready, when they're ready not when you're ready. So what that means is, by definition, if you understand that people do business with those they know, like, and trust, you have to have no like, and trust ahead of when they're ready. Because if they're ready and they know, like, and trust you, they will purchase from you. But if they're ready and they don't trust you, they will buy, but not from you. And if they know, like, and trust you, and they're not ready, and you try to force them into that purchase today, you actually broke the trust that has been developed, and they probably will never buy again, if, in fact, they buy at that time at all. So the reality is, these are in sequence for a reason. The one reason some of us more mature, that's code word for older, some of us more mature salespeople still have tremendous success is because we're willing to take the time and effort it takes to build no like, and trust ahead of when they're ready. Really hard to differentiate yourself if you haven't built that relationship because your only differentiator typically becomes price. Only one person can have the lowest price in town, and that's gonna create problems for you going forward. Now, remember that, that middle section, we want to be no like, and trust. That would be ideal. Well, actually, there's even a better thing than no like, and trust, is what we really want is them to respect, love, and have think you hung the moon status with them. We want our customers, I want all my customers to respect the hell out of me, to actually love me and believe that I have hung the moon and will continue to do that for them going forward. That's what we really want to have happen. So how do you make that happen? How do you make the transfer from no like and trust to respect, love, and think you hung the moon? Well, basically, you become an asset to everyone you meet. Asset is a five-letter acronym for a spontaneous servant every time. Become a spontaneous servant every time. Find out what they need. What's, what are their greatest challenges? If they could improve one thing in their life right now, what would it be? 
if they could improve one thing in their business right now, what would it be? Now, the chances of them needing what you do when you ask that question, maybe 5%, maybe. But the chances of them needing to know someone you know or something you know is probably 95%. So that's where, again, Tim said earlier, we, we share leads with each other. We do those things. He's the expert at blogging and vlogging and in the in virtual summits now and what he's doing in this make it easy to get your expertise out there so that you can become the authority. Well, how do you become an asset to somebody like that? You share a lead. Not asked for, not required, out of the blue. Hey, Tim. You know, I was just talking to somebody and, and your name popped into my head and oh my goodness, I, I think you guys had hit it off. Let me, can, can I do a cross introduction for you? See, I actually call in advance and set up the fact that I'm going to cross introduce them. Well, what does that do for you? It starts to give you thank you hung the moon status as this goes along. So again, the biggest parts of this are understanding all of these things are in your control. If you're not doing enough business today, it's not because of the activity you're taking today. It's because of the lack of activity 30, 60, 90 days ago. Today's activity does not determine today's volume. Today's volume was determined by what you did 30, 60, 90 days ago. Today's activity determines what happens 30, 60, 90 days from now. Congratulations for being here today. You have taken a solid action that if you are taking notes all day long, there are some brilliant speakers. Tim himself, Brian, the other folks that he mentioned are amazing presenters. You are now taking the action today that will help you grow your business tomorrow, next week, next month, 60 days from now, 90 days from now, even a year from now or more. Congratulations. I honor you for being here today. You could be doing a lot of other stuff. It's going to be a great day. I'm tremendously honored that Tim asked me to spend a few minutes with you and share some of these concepts. So what I'd like to offer you is my free seven steps to heart-centered selling audio. Simply go to scottschilling.org, my name, S-C-O-T-T-S-C-H-I-L-L-I-N-G dot org, and search down about uh, three quarters of the way down the homepage, you'll see, get my free sales course. Just click it. You'll fill in your name and, and email address. It'll download to you. It is, um, I believe it's eight sessions that give you the seven steps of heart-centered selling with an introduction to give it to you that way. So again, I honor you. If there's ever anything that I can do to be of service to you, let me know. Reach out. Scott at scottshilling.com. I don't, I don't uh, make it hard to find me. And Or you could also go through Tim, obviously. So Tim, I think that's my time. I, I greatly appreciate being able to be here with you and the, this amazing audience and those who will get this on the replay. And by the way, if you're one of the people live, make sure that you share how awesome this event is live and make sure that your friends get the replay going forward. Yeah. yeah. That's the neat, neat thing about our, our, our community, Scott, is uh, we made it a one-time fee, $20, one-time membership, $20, and we're going to give 10 to charity. And you get to access all of our events, past, present, future, for 20 bucks. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. What a deal. What a deal. We're the only ones doing it in the industry, by the way. Exactly. Uh, well, that's all why you're a leader. First. That's why you're a leader, buddy. <laughs> Scott Schilling, man, I'll talk to you soon, man. I know you and I got to have another talk soon uh, uh, with some stuff we're doing, and I appreciate everything you're doing to help me. Absolutely. Have a great day, all. All right. Bye -bye. Talk to you later, buddy. Scott Schilling, ladies and gentlemen. All right, go check him out, scottschilling.com. Thank you, Scott, for so much uh, that you've done for me over the years in helping me build my business. You see that, all right? You know, 
uh, everybody says, well, is this a formal thing for this simple, easy talk? It's, it's, it's going to be a, an evolving process. Again, as why I outlined for you earlier today, this is a way for you to learn, all right, about what someone does and how they can help you in a 15-minute time span. This is also a way for you to actually study each speaker because each speaker is going to take that 15 minute spot and is going to do it just a little different, but they've still within the same uh, uh, guidelines they started. And again, that's a root way of why we're creating this simple, easy talks. So number one, you can learn from them. Number two, you can learn how to do the same thing to teach your business to someone else. Our next speaker is just, just like me. He's someone who's out there doing everything he can to be successful. Got a great podcast, built a great show. All right. I think he's wrote a couple dozen books from his show. I'm sure he'll tell me that again. Uh, but he has actually done what we teach. All right. And it's probably one of the reasons why I love to have him on here because he does the, the very foundational thing we teach. He does it a little different though, but it's all about using something to create content to go out there and repurpose it. Brian Wright and I go back. I think we met each other at Craig Dustwaltz. Uh, one of Craig Dustwaltz or James Malinchek's events. I can't remember which one. And been friends on Facebook. Actually, um, I think we've been on each other. Have we been on each other's shows, Brian? I know you've been on mine, but I don't know if I've been on yours. I'm, I'm trying to think if we've been on each other's shows or not. Uh, but we both have been introduced to each other's audiences at least a dozen times. Uh, you know, because we always are sharing. We're always in the same realm of people. Successful people hang out with successful people. Right? That's your clue right there. We hang out with both of us with successful people, and that's why we've actually gotten to where we're at. Let me bring Mr. Brian K. right up here. How are you, buddy? I'm fantastic. Thanks for having me, Tim. Can you hear me okay? I got you good, man. You're good and loud today. Good. That's good. fantastic. Well, I'm very happy to be here. Honored that, uh, that you invited me to be here, and I'm ready to rock and roll. Yep. You got a slideshow or are you just going to do it, uh, wing it? I'm just going to talk. I'm not doing it. a slideshow. I love it. Uh, all right. I'm going to leave you go. You're on for 15 minutes. Call me if you need me. I'm in the, in the green room. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Well, everyone, thank you for being here today at this event. I'm excited to talk to you about creating and repurposing content. Now, as Tim mentioned, I do a radio show on the Toginet Radio Network. My show is called Success Profiles Radio. That is the springboard for everything that I do to create content. Now, I do a lot of things with my content, as Tim alluded to. I have created books from my radio show. You can do that by transcribing an episode and editing it and create chapters of a book. I did that for the first time back in 2014. Uh, that book was called Success Profiles, um, Mental, Tough Mental Toughness and Sales. And I had Scott Lopez, Jeffrey Gittimer, and Eric Lothholm on three consecutive weeks. And I realized they all talked about sales. They all talked about being mentally tough. They all talked about not giving up. So I transcribed all three of those episodes and created a small 64 page book out of it. And I sold a few copies and I thought this is a really great idea. And so I decided that after that, I was going to create a couple more books and success profiles, conversations with high achievers, volumes one and two. So I have created content from my radio show, repurposed it into books. This book, this one, <laughs> features Jack Canfield, Tom Ziegler, Laura Langmeyer, Darren Hardy, and more. And then this one has, as you can see, Kevin Harrington, Chris Powell, Dan Locke, Brad Sugars, and a lot more. They're on, they're on Amazon if you can get them if you want to. But you can create content from your radio show. You can also spin content into a magazine. I did that with Success Profiles Magazine. My show is Success Profiles Radio. My magazine is Success Profiles Magazine. This was the first issue that I ever did of Success Profiles Magazine. And yes, Kevin Harrington was on my show six months before I created this. This magazine came out in December 2017 and I've been creating one every single month since then. I'm working on issue number 43 right now. It's a digital magazine, but I print them out occasionally so that I can take them to events and distribute them. Think about the power of networking at events for, for a second with a magazine. When you talk to someone and you have a great conversation, the first thing they always say is, oh, I'd love to stay connected with you. Do you have a card? I have a magazine. Wait, what? No one does this, folks. No one does this. No one gives a magazine instead of a card or in addition to a card. So that's how I stand out. Sometimes this turns into conversations about how can I get in your magazine? Well, you can write a, mag a magazine article 
if you want to, I've got a number of people who contribute every single month. Uh, getting on the cover, I, I do special edition for my clients where they can be branded all by themselves, but it's a way to get your message out to the world in a unique way with no ads, no, no other noise except for you. And so those are some things that I do to help clients get in front of people. And I also help people write their books. So writing a book is something that is a dream for a lot of people. And I'd like to spend some time talking about that because you can use your book as a springboard to do all these other things. In fact, I have a client who completed his book with me recently, and he has repurposed excerpts from the book into blog posts on Medium. And then what I have done is I have repurposed those blog posts into magazine articles. So you can use the same content over and over and over again. And you might think, well, gosh, isn't someone going to get bored seeing all that? No, because here's the thing. Someone who sees your book may not know you have a show. Someone who hears your show may not know you do a magazine. Someone who reads your magazine may not know that I, you know, that you write books for people and vice versa. And so it all cross pollinates one plus one plus one equals five. Now, super fan will see you everywhere and we'll start to buy everything that you do. We love super fans. If you have a small enough group, if you have a, a good cluster of super fans who buy everything you do, you can make a good living. So that's the goal is to create super fans. You have to create your omnipresence online. So I do want to talk a little bit about getting started writing your book. Now, a lot of people tell me that they want to write a book. In fact, statistics show that over 80% of people want to write a book, but only 1% or less ever actually do. Now, why is that? Well, there are some good reasons why people haven't done this. Number one, they don't think they're good enough writers. Let me tell you, you don't have to be a great writer to be an author. Robert Kiyosaki very famously says he's a best-selling author, not a best writing author. In fact, a journalist that he said that to got really annoyed with the idea that he dared to call himself a best-selling author when he basically did horrible in English. It's okay. You can have people help you do that. In fact, if you think about politicians, celebrities, they don't do this. Think what you will about Trump. But when he wrote The Art of the Deal, when he wrote his early books, he didn't actually do this at a keyboard. He had his secretary in the back of his limo with him. He would talk. She would shorthand, type it out, show it to him. He would approve, not approve, suggest changes. And that's how The Art of the Deal got written. So you don't have to do this if you don't want to. You can talk into a recording like we're doing now. This is being recorded. And I would say to Tim, if he wants to create a book out of the content from this summit, that might be something that you can do. The recording's already going on. So why not use this content over and over and over and over again? So that's what you can do. You don't have to be a great writer in order to create a book. Another reason why people don't write books is because they think they don't have something to say. Who would read what I wrote? I'm not good at anything. Well, yeah, you are. In fact, I would argue that everyone has the potential to be a genius at something in life. I do believe that God has endowed all of us with a gift. It is our job to find that gift. Some people figure that out really early. Tiger Woods figured out really early in life at his dad's prodding that he was going to be really, really good at golf someday. Some people figure out that gift later, later, later in life. But some people, sadly enough, don't ever figure that out at all. In fact, if you aren't sure what you have to say, I would start asking people that you love, know, and trust. If I was to write a book, what would you think that I would be writing about? What do you think I know a lot about that I could share with people? Think about this. Categories of books. Some of those popular categories of books are how-to books, cooking books, relationship books, business books self-help books. So think about what category you might fit in. In fact, if you know how to do something and people ask you over and over again, how did you do that? That might be a candidate for a good book for you. So yes, you do have something to say. The third reason why people don't write books is because they don't think they have time. You can make time if it's important to you. In fact, if you write one page every day for three or four months, you will have a book. Time will pass whether you write or not. So write, just do it. Just go ahead and do it. So why should you write a book? It fulfills a bucket list item. It checks that box for a lot of people. You also can use that as a lead generation tool for your business. Sometimes people write short eBooks and they'll put it on their website and they'll give it away for free in order to capture someone's email address. That's someone that you can market to over and over and over again for the rest of your career. So think about that. You may not make a ton of money selling the book, but the stuff you can do because of the book can generate enormous potential income wise and impact wise. You also with a book have a higher perceived level of credibility in your marketplace. Let's just say that someone is thinking about hiring the thing that you do 
And let's say that they get three quotes. That's pretty average. They get quotes from three different people. What if you're the only one that has a book and the other two don't? Who are they going to perceive as being the greater authority? It has to be you because you wrote enough about, you wrote a book about it. You know enough about your topic that you wrote a book about it. If you are someone like a car mechanic and you think, well, who's going to buy that? That's basically like creating a user's manual. No, it doesn't have to be. Let's just say you created a short little 40 page book about things that you need to look out for before you come to us. Little simple maintenance things that you can do. And at the end of the book, you can say, if you have questions about anything regarding your car, call us, visit us, visit, uh, email us, visit our website, come down to our store, whatever. You give somebody a copy of that book every time they come in to do it all change. They're going to, they're going to take that book with them and they'll read it. And if someone asks you where you get your car worked on, you can show them the book. This guy, he wrote a book. Oh gosh, he must be good. He must know something. It's a great lead generation tool. You can also create multiple streams of income from your book. You can, you can sell your book on stage. You can sell your book on Amazon. You can use your book to get people to come to your free three-day event like T. Harv Eker did in his book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. The whole purpose of that book was to bring people to his free event. And then what does he do there? He sells you on his Quantum Leap program and all of his other coaching programs. They do well enough that they can afford to bring you in for free to let you come for free to do that. Robert Kiyosaki's book has a call to action. He wants to sell his cash flow book. If you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, his goal was to sell the game. Yes, he'll give you a ton of value and he'll give you a lot of great ideas regarding how to think about money, but he wants to sell his game. So what do you want to have happen because of your book? Are you creating a coaching program? Are you inviting people to your retreat? Are you wanting people to be in your community somehow just to get on your list? Are you wanting them to give to a cause? How do you want them to think, act, feel, and behave differently because they read your book? So think about the different streams of revenue that you can do. And of course, the biggest reason is that you have a lot of content that you can repurpose. So let's just say that you do want to get started writing a book. I've got a few minutes here left. Three things that I would suggest. Number one, have a clear message. Have a clear message. You want to create purpose. You want to create impact. So again, what do you want people to think, believe, act, and do differently because they read your book? Number two, know what your audience wants. So the thing that you should write your book about should be the intersection of three things. What do you know a lot about? What does your audience want to know a lot about? What will your audience pay for? Those are your three things. I'll say them again. What do you know about? What does your audience want to know about? And what will they pay for? Because ultimately you want people to pay you for your expertise. Am I right? Yes, that's correct. Writing a book can be a fun bucket list item. But one thing, when I interviewed Sharon Lecter uh, on my show, she basically gave me a really good millionaire secret. She said, I don't do anything unless I can figure out how to make money doing it. That takes a lot of things off your plate. That takes a lot of things off your list. So let's just say you're thinking about hiring a VA. Can that VA do some things that'll help you generate revenue? Will that VA pay for themselves by the things that they are helping you do? If the answer is yes, hire that VA. If you can think of reasons why you can leverage your book to build your business, you better write that book yesterday. I'm not even kidding. Have a book. So few people do it. I mean, you you see a lot of people on Facebook saying, I just wrote this book. Well, great. There are a lot of people not in our space, not in our world, who've never written a book and they've always wanted to. So write that book. That puts you in the top 1%. It really does. If you write more than one book, it puts you in a greater echelon of people. And so have a clear message, know what your audience wants. And number three, have an end game in mind. And like I talked about before, have a reason why you want to write your book. What do you want people to do differently because of it? So you can use your book to do a lot of things. Like I mentioned, you can speak on stage. Getting on stage is easier if you have a book. If someone is thinking about hiring a speaker and they're considering, let's just say, three people again, you have a book, the other two don't. Well, the greater value add is that you are the one who wrote a book. You can use that uh, as part of your speaking contract. You can find out how many people are going to be in the audience. Let's just say there's 100 because the math is easy. And you can offer that event planner 100 copies of your book for everyone in their audience at a wholesale rate, not the retail rate, a wholesale rate. You want to add value. So you can add an extra, let's just say 800 bucks to your speaking contract because you're providing a book to everybody at the end of your talk. And oh, by the way, you can offer to sign copies. 
there's a whole celebrity status with, that goes with signing a book in the back of the room. And a few people in, in this audience probably have done this before. I've done it. It's amazing. Again, masterminds. You can create live events around your area of expertise. Sometimes just writing a book is you just have to figure out how to put all that material together. And you can do a lot. And yes, you can do a PDF. In fact, a, a number of my clients don't even print copies. They will send the PDF or they will sell the PDF on Amazon or they'll use it as a free magnet or they will send it to an event planner to say, hey, I would love to speak on your on your stage. This is what I can talk about. And here's a short PDF of what I can talk about. It'll give you some really great leverage to do that. And you can create a coaching program. I mean, think about this. If someone's thinking about hiring you to be a coach, and again, they're thinking about three different people. I know my time is almost up. If they're thinking about three different people and you've written a book on your area of expertise and the other two haven't, I think I'm going to go with the person who wrote a book. They The other two people probably know something and maybe they just haven't gotten around to writing a book yet. But if you're the one with the book, do it. So you can use a book to create content. And again, like I talked about, you can repurpose that contact in a lot of different things. You can do a Facebook Live and you can download and transcribe that into a chapter of a book or a blog post or a magazine article. I do this all the time. If I need to write a, an article for my magazine, I'll do a short five minute live on something. I'll download it, transcribe it, edit it. That's my two page article done. I'm done with the whole thing in about an hour. I'm not even kidding. Use technology, leverage technology. You can do this. You can do this. So if you would like to schedule a call with me to talk about how you can create and repurpose content, I would love to do that. Go to callwithbrian.com, B-R-I-A-N, callwithbrian.com and get on my calendar. And if you would like to see a free issue of my magazine, I'm going to give you a website address. The website address is kind of long. It is brianwrightinternational.com forward slash VIP, as in very important person brianwrightinternational.com forward slash vip.com forward yeah brianwrightinternational.com forward slash vip you will get a free issue of success profiles magazine in pdf form it is featuring dennis waitley on the cover and that issue is dedicated to the movie called how thoughts become things that douglas vermeer put together a couple years ago i interviewed dennis waitley for that issue john osaroff joe vitale john de martini all of them brilliant. So there were a lot of really well-known household names in that issue. And if you do feel like subscribing after that, there's a way for you to do that too. But I want to give you that free issue of the magazine so that you can see what is possible. I interviewed all of them, created magazine content from it. So there you go. Call with Brian.com and brianwrightinternational.com forward slash VIP for your free issue of the magazine. That is what I have to say. And if there's time left, I will be glad to take questions, Tim. Oh, hold on. I was making adjustments on my thing here and I, I got to get back to the comments. <laughs> there you go. I didn't see comments, so I have no idea of what uh, people were saying. The one popped up there. Uh, one question popped up and a lot of people, uh, you know what I mean? Some making some good guy. Indeed, this is a progress with Michael Heppo. Uh, this gentleman here, Robert, all right, he actually has done that, uh, signed a book as he wrote a chapter and it was a good thing. Um, you know what I mean? Melissa said she was glad she was learning this and then yeah. she, she's the one who asked the question about yes. can it be a PDF book? Of course. And uh, you know, that's a good place to start as a PDF. I, I And I've always encouraged people to try to get a print book out, uh, even though, um, even though like everybody's going, well, we want digital books. Believe it or not, holding this in hand, oh, yeah. uh, you know what I mean, at an event is, is still more valuable and it's very inexpensive to do. I know I did this with Craig's system when I did it in 2012. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think I paid a thousand dollars to have a couple thousand copies of this out there. Yeah. All right. And, you know, I made my money back easily. Yeah. And that's where we met, by the way, was Craig Dozel. Was it Craig? I think, yeah, I wasn't I think sure you were Craig. running around helping him. I think you were one of um, one of his uh, dream team members. I yeah, I well, you know, his first couple that I was there, uh, I was just, you know, an attendee. Uh, wasn't it about, about 2015 that I kind of became part of his staff ah. and, and and I kind of work a lot. I, I'm the guy who escorts Dean Kane to his car with no one knowing where he's at. Oh, wow. Or, or, or I, I'm the guy who takes uh, Glenn Moore shower off stage and runs them through the back so he doesn't get flocked with people. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I love it because that's how I got to know Dean. Yeah. <laughs> it got on his podcast. But anyway, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's been good getting to know you over the years. And I know you you actually have – you did the radio. I was on – not TogiNet. Well, I was on Craig's next one where he went with um, – Craig when he moved over to Dave Pratt. 
yeah. I spent two years there and then I, I went to be an independent again. I just, yeah. I, I couldn't do the things, but I know, uh, I know several people are still doing the radio show or the, yeah. you know, podcast with a company. Yeah. So, I'm still yeah. on, I'm still on Togi nine and a half years later. Yeah. Togi was good people. I, I miss John. I really do. I'm friends with John. I still see him, but I mean, I miss John from Togi but he was, yeah. if, if it wasn't for John, I would not be doing a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> he got me, ta he talked me into it, but anyway. Yeah. Well, man, I appreciate you coming in and sharing information today. All right. It is. And it's, and it's an honor to finally have you on, on the virtual stage. Yeah. Uh, we're looking forward to having you back again. So, uh, you know, by all means, thanks for being part of our community, brother. You're so welcome. And thanks to everybody for attending and please support Tim, whatever he's doing. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Support Brian as well. So thank you. All right. Bye, Brian. Hey guys, thanks Brian Wright for coming in. All right, taking some time out of your Saturday to come in here and help the people with a very simple, easy talk. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. It's simple, easy talks is what the kind of thing today. All right. Yes, thank you, Brian Robert puts in there. All right. And and uh, Melissa, I I working on writing a physical book. I'll have it done by the end of July. Good. Uh, we may hold you to that goal there, Melissa, because we like it. It's not that hard to do. And if you have problems getting it printed, both Brian or I know the people who can connect you to get it printed. All right. So we're both very connected in that realm. Uh, and I think some cases we actually know the same people. But anyway, it's something that you can get done. I want to take this next section, ladies and gentlemen, as I outlined earlier in my talk about what a simple, easy talk is. And now I want to give you an example of how I do it in my business. For information, all right, number one, I always teach several different things, and I can always break tons of things down into a talk. One of the things that I do with a talk is, oh, good, Michelle just joined my email list. Ain't that something? One of the things I always do with a talk is, is something my coach taught me, and that is, just because you have a seven-point system doesn't mean you give all seven points in the talk. I have three things that I actually share with people all the time. It is my simple, easy success system. It is a three-point system that you need to be successful. Number one, you need assets. Number two, you need discipline or a system. And number three, you need discipline. Assets, system, discipline. That's always been the three parts. Let me break them down for you real quick. But before you, I do, I'm going to tell you why I come up with this system. Number one, I realized a long, long time ago when I actually heard an old, uh, you know, real estate speaker share this very idea out there. And I got to meet him in 2014. He now own, own, owns a winery in Napa. And when I got to meet him in person, he was taken back because the things that happened with him teaching real estate didn't pan out very well. And he got really spookish. And I told him, I said, no, sir, because of you, I own real estate. Because of you, I am successful in business. Because of you, I have pressed on because of two things you always said. And he said, you need a system and discipline. And I clicked into every system in the world and I disciplined myself to stick to the system. And so often I'd stick to the system and still get nothing. Maybe that's you. Maybe you follow in somebody's system. And I know tons of it. I have clients in my mastermind and my inner circle who have followed very famous people's systems and got nothing but broke. They were disciplined. Trust me, they did it. They did it. They did it. But they were broke. And that's where I learned the third part to the formula. And that's where I learned you have to have assets to make it work. And you got to build on your assets. So if you're just following a system and discipline following a system, it's not going to do any good if you don't start building assets first. And the number one asset that I had to learn to build myself, ladies and gentlemen, that's one of the number one assets. Assets can mean several things. Number one, it could mean that you have an email list. Number two, it can mean you have sales. Or number three, it could mean you have general wisdom and knowledge right here in this thing right here. You know something that I don't. You know something that Scott doesn't. You know something that Brian doesn't. You know something that Joe doesn't. And you know something that Juana doesn't. You need to take that, that's an asset you have, and share. That's an asset that you've got to plug into the system and discipline to make it work. You see, so many people overlook assets. Think about this as a real estate transaction. I have a real estate business. 
I could not be collecting rent money every month if I did not have the asset of the real estate itself to rent out to people. Now, I could have the asset, but if I didn't plug into a system that actually helped me get the actual renters, I would not have that money coming in every month. I can have the asset, I can have the system, all right, but I cannot be disciplined so I don't go keep the property up, all right, I let it run down, I don't answer when they tell me they got a water leak, all right, before you know it, I don't have the asset anymore. Asset system discipline. You see, you've got to learn to build your assets no matter what they are, start with what you have and work on it. Brian and I both started by creating content, a radio show, a podcast, live stream shows. You can create with just a blog. I started with pro, po, just posting a blog because it's the only thing I knew how to do. Write and post it. Write and post. Creating assets. Number two, you actually have to have a system out there, ladies and gentlemen. A system. When it comes to building your system out there, ladies and gentlemen, you can follow my system. You can follow Brian's system. You can follow Scott's system. You can follow Joe's system. You can follow Luana's system. The truth is, is the longer you stay into my system and Joe's system or Brian's or all of our systems, and you just follow our system, pretty soon you're going to run out of and start start petering out of energy. The good people like Scott, Brian, Luana, and Joe and myself, we teach you to follow our system till we can start seeing you get, get your wheels and your assets building. And then we teach you how to tweak your system and create your own system. See, Brian's got a, a cool system of repurposing, totally different than my repurpose your stuff. And it works for him. Guess what? Brian and I probably, if we came together and sat and tried to tweak a system for you, I guarantee you the system we, Brian and I created together for you would be different than both his and mine. Why? It's because we learned how to build systems. We learn the wisdom behind the system and why we need to help you have your own system. Speaking of system, people say to me, well, Tim, what is, what is your system that you teach people in repurposing? Well, I'm going to tell you, my system, I didn't originate it. I learned it from a guy named Casey Everhart. I tweaked it. Casey Everhart basically taught it to me because he seen it from somebody on TV. Let me explain the system to you, but before I do, let me ask you, who's the wealthiest woman in the world that you know? Go ahead, put it in the comments. The wealthiest woman you know in the world today. I'm going to wait for someone to put this in the comments because I know you know who I'm talking about. Anyone? Anyone? Wealthiest woman. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> and Brian gets the, the ding ding. Oprah Winfrey. Wealthiest woman I know. Why? She's also the most influential woman I know. Why? Name something, a product that Oprah Winfrey sells. Anyone? Anyone? I can't think of one product Oprah Winfrey sells. Now, she's endorsed a lot of products. She's not sold it. She built her entire industry by doing this, th this three-step process. Number one, she found other people and had them bring in their content, their information, their assets to come on to her show. Then she asked them to bring their audience to her show. And then she merely shared about their information to their audience on her show. Other people's information, other people's audiences created her own content. What does that do for you? Let me explain. Oprah Winfrey did it with a TV show. You have two, two times, three times, five times more places to do this and ways to build it than Oprah Winfrey. You're luckier than her. 
You have more going for you than Elmford Winfrey did. It's easier. It's simpler and easier. Number one, use a tool like, like, like StreamYard that we use here. Invite Brian K. Wright on your show and interview him. Ask Brian all kinds of great questions. Before you do, you send an email and say, hey, Brian, here's the link for our show. If you would, would you share that out with your community? Brian Wright, he may think Tim Gillette's all that. And he goes, hey, man, guys, I'm going to be on the Tim Gillette show. Go check this out. He thinks it's great. He doesn't know whether I am famous or I'm just some guy starting out. Why? Because I approach him in a professional manner. So he shares it out, tells his whole community, he's going to be on my show. So then I get him on the show. I make the experience on my show so much fun that literally everyone who's been on my show, including people like Scott McCain, Bob Berg, all right, uh, Larry Broughton, uh, Kerry Wilkerson, they've been on my show, and every one of them tell me the same thing. This is the most fun I've ever had making a podcast about my business. I make the experience so great. I'm nobody famous or rich or wild or screwy or anything to that. All I am is some guy who's interviewing people. I truthfully love it because it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. I get to ask you questions. You ask me questions. We have a conversation. Record it. Now I move on to the next phase. You see, I, I have a system down. Then the very next day, I actually send him an email. Hey, Brian. Remember the interview we did yesterday? Well, I put my I put it up on my YouTube channel, so if you want to go get it, you can go get it and link with it. You know what Brian does? He takes the YouTube video and shares it with his community. Again, I'm totally relying on Brian's community and Brian's information. I still haven't tapped into any asset I have other than I bought a subscription to StreamYard. And I have a YouTube channel at this point. So Brian shares it with community, all right? And that's the second time that I get to tap in his community. Seven days later, I actually now reach back out to Brian and I go, hey, Brian, I took the audio out of that video we did last week and I put it up on a podcast over here on iTunes. Go check it out. By the way, mine are on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, Amazon, Google, uh, all kinds of places online that I have my podcast once I put it up. Now, I share that with Brian in an email. Brian goes, hey, man, hey, community, go check out this interview I did with Tim last week. It was the most fun I ever had on a, on a podcast about my business. Again, I have now tapped into Brian's audience three times. All I did was interview him and have a good time with him on camera. Talk to him about his business. That's all I did. That's it. And 14 days after the interview, I actually write a blog post about it. I put the YouTube video up there. I put the Spotify link up there. I read a little blip about Brian and I and things we talked about. I don't do the, the on my blog post, I don't do the show notes like some people do. No, I do it differently. I make people watch the show or listen to the show, but I give them some highlights as to why they need to watch the show or listen to the show. Because now they're reading my blog. They're maybe clicking on the Spotify link now to listen to it. They're maybe watching the YouTube video again to listen to it. And the whole thing that got them there was is I emailed Brian and I said, hey, Brian, I put that, made, made that video and podcast into a blog post. Brian goes, wow, he, I got to share this out with my audience. Hey, check it out. Tim said something about me on his blog and he actually put that whole show up by there. Go check it out. Four times. I reached Brian's audience. And here's the neat, neat thing. I do that 125 times a year. That's 125 people's audiences. And I know every one of you out there is like, well, I've got to get Kevin Harrington, which is one of the people I've seen on things. I've, I've got to get Scott Schilling. I've got to get... I do this, ladies and gentlemen, with ordinary people. And most of you will not. You'll, you'll try to go interview the stars. And I know a guy who his very first podcast interview he ever did was Tony Robbins. It was also his last podcast interview. Don't go for the top. Here's why I say build a balance. Yes, try to interview some experts in your field. 
but in your system, try to then also interview some people who are unique and are willing to share because they're overwhelmed that you had them on the show. I had a young lady who has, I think the disease is called ataxia. Some of you correct me on that. I don't know exactly it. Young lady, she just, she wanted to practice to be a speaker. Can ha has a hard time speaking, but she wanted to try to practice being a speaker. So I wrote her and I said, hey, I'll have you on my show. I, I'll interview you. One of the most successful shows I ever did. More people came to listen to her on my show than came to listen to Guy Kawasaki on my show. More people came to listen to her on my show than came to listen to Larry Wingett on my show. Why? Because she told everybody and she made it like this huge announcement like, hey, man, I'm going to be on Tim Gillette's show. She advertised and marketed me more than I could ever market myself. Why? I gave her an opportunity that no one else would. She loves me and shared me with everyone. And some of you will go, well, I, you know, I only want her to interview, you know, Tony Robbins. You start at the top, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. There's only one place to go from the top. That's down. You start at the bottom. There's only one place to go. Up. And I'm going to tell you, I've learned that no matter who it is, I will put them on my show. I have a few restrictions that I don't allow on my show. All right. But it's so simple. Interview them. Ask them to share with their audience. Repurpose the content and put it in a different format and redo the same thing. Rinse. Lather. Rinse. Repeat. That's all you got to do. So a system like that is what I have done over and over again to get out there and repurpose. I get asked to speak on repurpose your content more than anything else because I'm doing it. Not because I have this great formula that I wrote out, all right, and outlined, and I go speak everywhere on it. No. I get asked to speak about what I do. Scott Schilling was here this morning speaking about what he does. Brian Wright speaking about what he does. Go do something until people start saying, hey, how'd you do that? Say, well, I'd love to speak to your audience about how I do it. System, repurpose, discipline. System, ladies and gentlemen, one of the things, and I realize my talk's going longer than 15 minutes if you haven't figured it out. Because I've learned in my years of assets, system, discipline, is sometimes my system has to be created and recreated. Sometimes your system will have to be created and recreated. I'm going to be honest with you, all right? This was a tough month for me uh, trying to put this new concept out, but I believe in it. And I'm going to actually find a way to tweak it and make it work. It was the hardest time to find speakers to get in because they always thought they all thought they had to fit into this little, little cubicle I was painting them in and they didn't understand the concept. The reason I asked every one of the speakers that are here today is because they are actually doing this to build their business already. They're successful already is why they're here to share. I had many people who were like, oh, ooh, that's a new thing. Simple, easy talks. I don't know if I want to be there. So I, to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, had a hard time putting this event together this month. It is something I struggled with, being honest with you which is the key to your system. Ladies and gentlemen, it's always going to have a flaw. Every solution you create will create other problems. Just part of the game. Instead of just going, hey, how can I solve my life's problems and be done with it? No, become a problem solver. Become a problem solver. I shared this week about how I actually helped somebody who was multimillionaire, very successful and famous in his field. And I helped him with a little bit of information that I knew that he couldn't solve a problem in his real estate. And I basically reached out and said, hey, this is how you solve it. No, I don't want nothing in return. Just let me tell you how to do it. I gave him the solution. I outlined it. Sure enough, he went and followed it and did it. And boom, he come back and he goes, why did I not know that? And I basically told him, you're, you're wise over in this area over here. I'm not. I come to you for wisdom in that area. 
and you give it to me freely. I pay for your advice. All right. In your coaching program. I love it. All that stuff. But every now and then I realize that none of us know everything. Some of us have to tap into other people to learn things. And every now and then I'm going to fail and I'm going to go home and I'm going to retweak it. I carry these things around with me everywhere. As you see, I have two of them right here on my desk. I have another one in my folder. Why? Because all of my systems are always being revamped. Just because you have a system doesn't mean it's a perfect end all of end all. Become a problem solver and you will always be in need. I love it when people come to me and say, well, I can't quite figure out how to do so-and-so. My mind goes, let me go figure it out. This week, I've been doing everything, trying to move everything. Some of you have moved over from my old shopping cart system to my new cartridge system that I do. The hardest thing I've had over the past three months is getting people from one shopping cart over to cartridge. Some of you have moved over, so others have not. I've been struggling with it because I wanted to get rid of this other system because it wasn't working for me. So I'm trying to come up with ways to get people to move. Again, it's a system that always needs to be tweaked. Always trying to make it better. Well, here's what I love about Kartra is I found all kinds of ways to go in there and solve it. And one of my clients basically come in and goes, well, I want this sequence in Kartra and I can't figure it out. So I sat with her yesterday and I said, this is a, the way we can do it. And she goes, nobody's doing that? And I said, nobody's doing that. And then she goes, wow, so you're going to create it? I'm like, yes, I'm going to create it for you. We're going to tweak it. We're going to make it real good. And I says, you know what we're going to do then? Is we're going to put it in the cartridge marketplace and we're going to sell it. And you're going to make money on the thing that you wanted because I sat there and went, oh, no one's done it. Let me find a way to do it. And I go create it. I'm a problem solver. And that brought joy to my life when she said, this is a problem I want solved. Let me get my tablet, my pen, and let me outline some ways to do it. It excites me to become problem solvers. That's why I love my mastermind members and my inner circle members because all the time they're coming to me with, Tim, how do I do this? And I'm like, oh, man, I'll go right here. Let me get out the notepad. I'll, I'll, have, I'll have it for you tomorrow. Okay, let's talk tomorrow. And I go solve it for him. It is one of my biggest joys is going to solve problems for people. The last thing in here is discipline. Discipline, ladies and gentlemen. Most people will not become disciplined to follow their systems. They will not become disciplined, all right, to tweak the system when it needs to be tweaked. What are you doing right now in your life, actually, to keep yourself disciplined? Is there things that you can do to actually help that, to tweak that, to make that better? I'm going to tell you a little trick that I do to keep myself disciplined. My coach and mentor, many of you know, is Craig Guswald. Been with working with Craig for over, over, over nine years now. He is a friend, all right? He is a mentor. He is someone that I can never picture not being in my life now. When it comes to discipline, he said something at his events a couple months ago, and he said, well, everybody now is stuck at home, and we're sitting in our chairs. And if you notice, when I do my events, I have a little stool back here, this one right here. And if you notice, they're the same ones that are on my stage when I do my live events. And I might prop back on here when I'm speaking at my speaking events. I raise my table, and I speak. But for the most part, I'm down in a chair just like the rest of you on the desk. And you become the Zoom fatigued and computer fatigued. And he said, you know what you got to do? You got to get up every hour and take a break. So I started taking a break. And once a day, I started playing this game my brother told me he plays. And he said, my brother told me, he said he started playing it because it started to teach him patience. So I started to learn to do the game so I could learn patience. I now have eight profiles on this game because I can have eight email addresses to get it to go to. So once an hour... I go in and work on one of the profiles in that game on my break. Then I walk down, I get another drink, come back up, take a drink, and go back to work. I play a game to relax every hour. 
uh, most people they would take that game and they would they be they, they would spend hours on just one of the one of the games. I learned how to create multiple ones because it's a management type real reality based. I don't know what you want to call it, uh, sim type game. And it relaxes me. And every hour I take a break and I play the game because number one, it teaches me patience. Number two, it makes me look into ways to grow my business. And number three, it disciplines me enough to go, okay, take a break from what you're working on there and go just relax your mind for a minute. And then I come back and I'm refreshed and I go to work. Discipline, ladies and gentlemen, is not about discipline, about doing the work. Sometimes it's discipline about managing your life. I work from my home. My wife and I have a small condo, um, two bedroom condo in Dallas, Texas. My wife has been gone for the last, uh, for the last month and a half. She has been gone opening up new stores for her company. So she's not been here, which means every day I have to go and clean the cat litter box out, which she usually does twice a day. I have to feed the cats twice a day. I have to make my own lunch, I have to make my own dinner, I have to make my own breakfast. I have to make my bed. I have to do my laundry. I have to do all this stuff. And yet, I still have time to play a game every day. I still sit down at night and watch TV. Why? Because I learned to build a discipline system that keeps me in action all the time. I'm not perfect at it. I'm always trying to get better at it. I'm doing it by building more assets to free more time up. And my wife said to me this morning, I got to see my wife this morning for about 15, 20 minutes before we came live this morning, before she left for the day. And I came live with you guys. And then this is thing my wife said, she says, I can't believe it. I came home to a clean house. When you get a system down, ladies and gentlemen, it's so much easier to put all the other things into your system to manage your life. And one by one, discipline yourself with the system. And it starts flowing. And then you get an asset and it flows better. And you get an asset and it flows better. And you get an asset and it flows better. Just like Brian was saying, start with one thing, float into new things, float into new things, float into new things. Before you know it, ladies and gentlemen, starting with this very concept of assets, system, discipline, you will start with a podcast or a blog. Then you're going to actually have a podcast, a blog, and a radio show. Then you're going to have a podcast, a blog, and a TV show. And it's going to be a podcast, blog, TV show, uh, virtual event, book, magazine, live event, coaching program, side business. And it grows and grows and grows and grows. The people who actually fail are the ones who actually, when they get the asset, they consume the asset. Robert, uh, Robert uh, uh, Kiyosaki, which was mentioned by Brian earlier. Robert Kiyosaki, and I'm sure Joel will talk about this, about more about being in investments and stuff. Is teaches you to build assets. Just because you made an extra thousand dollars a month doesn't mean you get to go spend an extra thousand dollars. Joel will probably tell you how much of it gets spent in taxes, but anyway. Um, as a matter of fact, I started cutting my expenses. And putting more in my investments. And what that does was a year and a half ago, my friend Sarah was doing this whole project of doing this new business thing. And she was looking for investors. And I said, how much you need? And she gave me an amount. And I was okay. And basically sent it over and invested in her company an amount of money. And if, if Sarah's business fails, I know it won't. But if Sarah's business fails, I'm not going to miss that money. If Sarah's business succeeds, that money's going to make me more money. That's how you keep building, ladies and gentlemen, and keep succeeding by following those three steps. Any questions? Let me see some of the comments that are in here. All right. So, uh, Melissa, thank you for uh, loving that. All right. Um, Robert, there is a need that I have. I, I need to love on people every day in an impactful way that brings the serenity and fulfillment. That I do. Good, good. A uh, great tip. Play a game to relax. I like to read a book to relax. But if it's a good book, I have trouble putting it down. 
So that's why I went to playing games. I actually do read books. So I read books before I go to bed and I read uh, a little bit of the Bible in the morning uh, when I get up. And uh, I'm actually uh, uh, going to be part of a new tr- helping a, a friend of mine start a new church in the Dallas area. And I'm going to have him on one of these programs. Uh, his name's Ashley, another great friend of mine here in Dallas. So, um, <laughs> Brian, I'm reading your notes now in, 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 in our chat. But yeah, <laughs> cool, buddy. Um, anyway, as you see, all right, ladies and gentlemen, this, this whole event today is about you actually learning systems. You learning a way to actually broadcast your system using what we call a simple, easy talk. It's a 15 minute span of time. And many, many times you will get networking uh, functions. All right. You've got to learn how to be able to take advantage of anything that comes to you about your business. And the first thing you got to learn to do is be able to speak about it. Zig Ziglar seen this in me many, many years ago when he, when he reached out to me and said, Tim, you should be a speaker. Tim, you have no problem getting up and sharing whatever you got, whatever's got to be shared. And if you knew me 10 years before I knew Zig, I wasn't that way. That was something I developed over time to learn to market and sell my business, my previous business. And it takes time to learn things, ladies and gentlemen. So I hope this helped you today. All right, we've got two more speakers coming up today. Our next one is going to be Mr. Joe Dachara. Joe, you ready to come on early? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to go early. No. All right. Um, we're going to bring our next speaker on here. All right. I, we're going to run ahead of schedule a little bit. That's good. I love an event that runs ahead of schedule. Uh, Joe Dachara and I uh, have known each other. Another person I met through Craig Duswalt. Joe, uh, yeah. One of these days, Joe and I are going to talk, and Joe's going to start doing my bookkeeping. All right. And it's not because he's he's a good bookkeeper. It's because he's a good manager. All right. And he's a good system down. All right. He's got assets in place to put the system together. And he has a team of people that will keep you disciplined. And I'm sure Joe's going to share that with you today as he comes in here, all right, with his great message. Mr. Joe, how are you? I'm great, Mr. Tim. How are you? Uh, you know, I- I'm winging it. I'm just winging it. <laughs> you wung it. You've wung it so long. Is that a, is that a word? Wung it. You've Whoa. been winging it so long, it's not winging it anymore. I- I'm winging it so long, <clears> they, think- <throat> they think I'm a professional at it now. Yes. You are. I love a lot of the stuff that you're saying. I agree with it 100%. You know, systems, discipline, Mm -hmm. it works. Yeah, it is so true. And boy, boy, did did, did the pandemic not help us realize that it's what we got to do? I'm telling you. Well, I think we we were doing it before the pandemic. Yeah, I was getting this down. The the virtual events popped because of the pandemic. And oh, my God. It really did help me uh, uh, get more discipline. It did. So anyway, uh, Joe, are you going to share some slides today or is it just you? <clears throat> I have some slides and you know, I got a workshop coming up on Tuesday. It's pretty long, but I, I want to go through this. How, how long do I have? Like 15 minutes? 15 minutes. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. The workshop is two hours. So I'm going to have to like speed it up. <laughs> All right. You got, if you want to share the slides, I'll put them up for you, buddy. Okay. How do I share it? Uh, click the button down below. Uh, uh, share. share. And I think you choose, uh, you know, whatever your PowerPoint is, it'll pop it up for me to put up in the screen and then I'll, you know, I actually do this <laughs> every day. Yeah. Like that. Like that. There we go. My friend, I'm going to put you on the <clears throat> Let's go, my friend. All right. Thank you. Give me one second. And here we go. So my topic is how to <clears throat> structure your business to generate cash flow. You know, I, I focused for a long time on just bookkeeping, accounting, and taxes, but then I realized that <clears throat> our clients really want to keep their money and they want us to help them find it. So I put this workshop together. I'm going to skip a lot of this stuff. I'm going to assume that you know me. <laughs> if you don't, uh, you'll know me a little bit better after this. <laughs> so what I'm, what I cover is tax minimization strategies, simple things like increasing revenue, decreasing your expenses, paying yourself, uh, speeding up your payments, and basically really fundamental uh, money management. 
Also, we're going to talk about business credit, credit cards, and interest expense, and how that could be sinking you. <clears throat> tax credits. There's, there's a ton of tax credits out there. And also, we started doing setting up not-for-profits, and we're going to start uh, applying for government grants. <clears throat> My goal is always to help you squeeze as much money out of your pocket, out of your business, keep it, and make it simple for you. We're not going to go into the CFO uh, thing. <clears throat> Life is difficult, and people like us make it even harder by going into business. It's not simple. Who am I? <clears throat> I've been doing this for over 35 years, working with small businesses, basically doing the same thing over and over again, thousands and thousands of times, <clears throat> only for different types of people, different types of businesses. So you could say I got a little bit of experience at this. Go back. I love helping people. I love teaching them, and I love helping them keep their money. <clears throat> when I first started, I I thought it was easy. I got into accounting. Uh, before that, I I run I ran an ice cream truck as a business because I wanted to see how easy it would be, and I made a lot of money. <clears throat> well, for that time, it, it was. It was good. Anyway, six months into my accounting career, I get a letter from New York State with a big, uh, it's a tax warrant. And for three days and nights, I had, I had no idea what the heck I did. I said I, I was in a cash business. Anyway, long story short, I thought my career was over. I was actually looking for a tax attorney. Uh, I was too embarrassed to ask any of the accountants what I was supposed to do. And basically I got, I got the courage up. I asked them and they said, call the number on, on, on the notice. And it turned out all it was, was that New York state wanted me to fill out a form to say that I wasn't in business anymore. Uh, that opened my eyes to how tough it is. <clears throat> People, I don't even believe any of these statistics. I believe what John Limbacher said. He said, given enough time, all businesses will fail. Uh, that's not really true because corporations are perpetual. And that's what we're going to talk about. It's not easy to set up a business. You don't know what you don't know. <clears throat> but if you did know, if you did know, what you're supposed to know, it'll lead to increased cash flow, more money in your pocket, and you'll never have to pay taxes again. That's actually possible. I follow something called the art of war. Uh, I have a friend, Sherilyn Chu. She's an expert at it. And there's like five principles. One principle is that you have, if you have the right moral code, you can win. Another principle is to know your opponent. Our opponent is the IRS for the most part. You go into business, and I see this happen all the time. People feel like they're being put through the shredder. And this is why, folks, <clears throat> the IRS's chief purpose is to collect taxes. Okay, that's it. Once you know that and you understand that, you have a better chance of success. There is hope. And I'm going to talk about John Limbacher has something called the freedom formula. <clears throat> and really, it's, it's about looking at your business and seeing where the heck you make money. You know, we're in, in the forest and sometimes we can't see the trees. Imagine if you could squeeze 20 to 50% more out of your business without even increasing sales, just by squeezing more money out, out of what you already have. You start out with this, with this in mind. 
tax minimization is is the is the goal. But that's not the only goal. See that that was my goal, and now I'm expanding it. And Tim talked about this about being organized. Oh, I gotta sit down again. If you're not organized, you are not going to be successful. It's as simple as that. Uh, Tim talks about uh, Craig, and Craig is OCD organized. He does uh, when he does his uh, webinar. Sometimes he shows you how organized he is, and this is where it starts, folks. The last place anybody really wants to start, and that's with simple bookkeeping, setting up a budget. Because if you want to squeeze money out of your business, you got to know where it is. You got to know where it's going. So the first strategy is we make you stealth. You want to be stealth. And what, what do I mean by that? <clears throat> the IRS is all over us. We want to fly under the radar. Okay. And the way that you do that is starting with your business structure. Now, I talk about this all the time. Uh, it's really not that complicated. And I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible in a couple of seconds here. These are the, there's a couple of other business structures, not for profits, uh, limited partnerships, but these are the main. Uh, there's really only three because a sole proprietor and a partnership are the same thing. Uh, Partnership just means that there's two P, two sole proprietors doing business together. It's the worst way to do business. Okay, without going into details, uh, I'll just tell you that you got a big uh, bullseye on your back when you're doing business like that. When it comes to the IRS, you could be a corporation or an S corp, which is still it's a corporation. Now, the LLC, LLP, the, the shocking thing about this, what people don't understand is that the IRS doesn't even recognize them. They go into what they call the de default category. So if you're a single member LLC, you're taxed as a sole proprietor. You don't want to be taxed as a sole proprietor. So... Who are sole proprietors? Anyone running a small business? Here, let, I'll cut to the chase, the, the number that, that really uh, rocked me. Out of 30 million businesses, 25 million are still sole proprietors. And, you know, my friend John, <laughs> and I think Tim, Tim listens to him too, he's like, find a problem and then solve it. Well, that's 25 million people with, with a big problem. Most of them don't know it. <clears throat> so I wrote this itty bitty book where uh, it's already on Amazon, but it'll explain everything about why you want to be an S Corp. The most important thing is paying yourself. People don't realize that when if you're doing business as a sole proprietor, you don't get to pay yourself. It's whatever your net profit is, is what you're paying taxes on. <clears throat> well, what if I could show you ways to pay yourself creatively without paying taxes on it? <clears throat> okay, I'll give you one quick example. I have a client that <clears throat> she set up a studio in her home and she had a lot of equipment that, that she had purchased, but she was never in business before. So it was personal property, $40,000 worth of equipment. She donated it to the business. The business got a $40,000 write-off. That lowered her income taxes substantially by about $12,000. That's $12,000 that she wouldn't have had if she wasn't in business. When you have a corporation, there's all kinds of ways to, to get money out, even if, without making a profit. 
Think about that. I love, and, and I do it often. I get people with wages that don't have a business or, or they have a hobby and we turn them into a business so that they could free up some tax money. Speaking of tax money, how would you like the government to get to pay part of your taxes? Well, my friend John, a couple of weeks ago, uh, no, actually it was a couple of months ago, he sends me an article and he says, is, is this for real? And this is what it was, the American with Disabilities Act. <clears throat> well, guess what, what that is? That was set up so that people like in wheelchairs can get into restaurants. But the way the law was written, the tax credit is available to anyone that makes it easier for somebody with a disability to gain access to their business. Well, John has this uh, really cool uh, widget that he puts on your, on your website that makes it ADA compliant. And guess what? You get up to a 50% tax credit for what that, whatever that cost you. So if John put it on your website and he charged you a thousand dollars, you're going to get a $500 credit. It can go up to $5,000 and it's a very simple form. There's no like documentation you need. Uh, it's unbelievably easy. You said, if you set up a pension plan for yourself, in your corporation, okay, you could hire your, your children, your wife, anybody, and you actually get a tax credit for doing that. So I could set up a pension plan for myself and get a tax credit. Energy credits. Uh, I just got a $300 energy, energy credit for a client that uh, put some solar panels on his house like two years ago. I mean, he already spent the money and I asked him the question and it was like finding $300. So here's uh, another tidbit. <clears throat> and these people that I'm showing you here, they'll, they'll be in my webinar. Uh, Dr. Webb is a former university president, dear friend. She's brilliant. She started teaching me more about insurance because there, there's a lot of ways <clears throat> to do creative tax planning, tax minimization, tax avoidance with insurance. I can't go into details, but if you've ever heard of something called indexed universal life, it's unbelievable. Uh, it's only been around about 10 years, but what it does is it, it doesn't only offer you protection, life insurance protection, it, it helps, it could help you grow your money and actually grow your money and withdraw it tax free. So I'm going to give you one example of what somebody she knows did. He had a very large policy, he had about a million dollars of cash in it. Now this is all cash that, that the taxes have already been paid on. A big problem that people have and they never realize it is they put money in a pension plan thinking that they're, that they're going to pay less taxes later on. Well, the opposite actually happens. I have people now that can't take money out of their pension plan because they're going to wind up paying 40% in taxes. That doesn't make any sense. That's that it doesn't serve the purpose. So he's got, so this guy has a million dollars cash available. He needs 500,000 to open up a business. Well, he didn't borrow the money. He just, well, he borrowed the money from himself. If that makes sense, he borrowed it out of his life insurance. And that 500,000 is all a tax write off. It's all a tax write-off. So he's in a high tax bracket. I could tell you that little maneuver probably saved him over $180,000 in taxes. Now, it takes time, but 
it's guaranteed to work because of something called the law of large numbers. That's what insurance is based on. So, you know, I ran the numbers uh, and they work. The rule of 72 is very important. And what that is, is you take whatever interest rate you're getting and you divide it by 72 and that's how many years it will take to double. So if you have your money in a savings account now, and if you're lucky enough to be getting 1%, it's going to take 72 years to double that money. Well, there's something called inflation. I think inflation is at like 3% now, I've heard. So you're actually going backwards. So you gotta, you have to find a way. Once you make that money, you start socking it away. You gotta have a way to safely outpace inflation. And this is another one of my favorite things that another friend of mine, Pat Wally, introduced me to. Other people's money. You know, I knew about this stuff. I knew that you know a business can go and get a line of credit. But I never really knew that a business could have its own credit. And there's ways to do that. Uh, it, takes, it takes a couple of years. you got to position yourself. But you could actually get lines of credit, loans that are not attached to your personal credit. Okay, I'll give you an example. I had to pay for my daughter's wedding a couple of years ago. Okay, I didn't, my credit, uh, I was trying to raise my credit score. So if I went out and took a loan, it would have hurt my credit. Well, I got a loan through PayPal through my business for $24,000. That helped me pay for my daughter's wedding and it didn't affect my credit. <laughs> so there's a lot of ways to do this stuff, folks. And the last thing I want to leave you with is something uh, that I'm doing. There's a ton of grant money out there. I've always known that it, that, that it was there. I didn't know how to get it until I started getting a couple of clients that got their own grants. So we are starting with, with Bedrock Business Builders. We are going to start offering people uh ways to get grants. Either we'll research it for them or we'll identify it for them. But there's there's a lot of money out there. Now, you you can be a business and get a grant. And the, the key behind it is you got to prove that it's for a moral cause. And I, I'll just leave it at that. It's easier. It's a lot easier to get a grant if you're a nonprofit. So Tim mentioned Craig Doswell. Craig set up uh, a, a foundation called Band Together a couple of years ago. I don't know if he's applied for any grants yet, but I do know that after he did that, his business like went through the roof, and I don't think it was a coincidence. Uh, and that that's all I have here, Tim. Uh, if anybody wants to connect with me, they can go to Time with Joe. I also have a mastermind, mastermind with Joe DeChara every Saturday at two o'clock. And that's my story, Tim. I'm sticking with it. I love that you've made that the, your tagline. That's to everything you do. That's my story. <laughs> I'm, sticking with it. I'm sorry. That's just hilarious that you've done that. Man. Uh, well, you know, I thought that it, it was, uh, I don't need to share anymore, right? Uh, I got it out there. Let me pull it okay. out. There. Oh, there we go. I thought it, I, I was like, I just said it one day and I was in, People thought it was hilarious, and I thought it was my idea. You, you yeah. know where it actually came from? No, where? Les Brown. Really? The first, <laughs> the first rock star event I went to, he spoke. Oh. And then I don't know how it came. I was like, oh, my God, that's where I got it from. Oh, wow. But mm -hmm. I'm sticking with it. <laughs> it's it just, you know, and, and so often we don't realize, you know, you go through your, you know, how, how many years were you into what you do before you just like kind of let me just throw that in at the end, you know, and, and it, it, it just, I don't even know, you know, I start my, my Facebook live saying, uh, coming from downtown Flushing, New York, I'm like, I don't even know if I'm downtown or uptown. Yeah. This stuff just 
comes to us, you know, from a, what is Glenn? Glenn calls it the whisper. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, that's it. I mean, yeah. you just start doing stuff and, and sooner or later, to, you know, figuring out it's like, you know, Katrina Garcia and I are starting this like joint uh, podcast show every week. Yeah, that, like, that's Whoa. cool. That's really cool. Larry told me I should do that. Yeah, we had no idea. We, we just were like talking one day. We had a phone call with each other one day. It was like, you know what I mean? I've always wanted to do this. I just could never find a co-host. And she's like, I did too. I can never find a co-host. So let's start it. We don't have a web domain to go with it yet. We don't have, you know, even, we don't even have the, the name down, the format, nothing. But we're that, just, that's let's where, start and figure it out. That's where all the fun is. Yeah, it is. That's yeah. why we, we always start new businesses, Tim. Look at it. How many yeah. different businesses have you had since, since I've known you? Oh, since you've known me, I've only had a few businesses, but in my lifetime, well, I've, I've created 25 different corporations. Okay. Well, maybe not different, but just- uh, oh, idea Brands? Oh my God, I've had eight, yeah. eight different brands. Re in my yeah. Business. Pivoting, redesigning, coming yeah. up with a new uh, product, you know, but it, it's great. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I actually, you know, I was telling my mom this week is, is in the early days, back when I was young and dumb and stupid and didn't think about- using things, I created a patent, a patent and idea that is used today in almost every tire shop in America. Um, but I was young, dumb and stupid. I had no idea what I had because I didn't have the money to develop it. Didn't have the assets to develop it and sold it off. And oh my God, and now it is used everywhere. Imagine if I'd have kept on that, kept that patent over these years. Yeah. I have some stories like that. Yeah. <laughs> and most people would sit there and go, yeah, most people, you ever go to listen to some small business? And say, well, I had my chance. I, I was like, okay, no, I did that. I can do it again. Let's keep going. Yeah. If you give up, you lose. Yeah. So I just keep going. Find the next one. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, well, Joey, I appreciate you coming in here uh, and sharing with us today. And uh, I guess I'll see you Tuesday, isn't it? Tuesday? Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Tuesday at 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Yeah, I got to send you a link. Send me a link because it's not on my calendar right now. And, yes, I, I, else, and, I, and I just kicked somebody else who wanted a spot. And I said, I, I got something. I just know what it is. It's not on my calendar. <laughs> okay. So. All right, my friend. I'll talk to All you right. Tuesday. Anytime. Thanks, right. Tim. Yeah. Later. So there's uh, Mr. Joe Dachara. I appreciate Joe. He's been a great, great friend and mentor to us over the past years. Uh, you know, connect with him on a lot of things. And, uh, you know, yes, we now are helping each other's community uh, where we started out just going, okay, what's our community going to be? And now you look at the two of us have grown our own communities and now we're helping each other's community. And that's when you basically do when you learn to build your business. Our next speaker here, all right, uh, is going to be uh, our, our, our last speaker of the day. All right, uh, Lawana Parker, she is a uh, uh, in my inner circle mastermind. All right, great person. When I first met Lawana, Lawana would not even get on camera. All right, and I'm sure she'll probably hear more about that, but she, she wouldn't even get on camera when I first met her. And now she is speaking on camera at virtual events everywhere as well as live events. My, how things have changed, all right. Uh, with that, I mean, I, I I don't want to say that, you know, uh, hey, you get in my mastermind, you're going to learn to do uh, speak at events. But I can tell you, you get in my mastermind, you're going to change. You're going to change and you're going to go places to create and fix your business. That's what we do with Mastermind Inner Circle members. So, Lawana Parker, all right. Lawana, are you ready today? Oh, I'm as ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> you know, I had one of those ideas, the post-it notes. Yeah. And I followed through on that in a made something out of just think how wealthy i'd be today <laughs> uh, you know the the great thing about luana when i was in the tire shop last last when i had my last truck when i was put tires on it about a year year and a half ago i was put tires on it and i'm actually in the tire shop and i was like can i look at that machine and he goes yeah why i looked at him i looked at the technology on it and i seen it and i said wow and he said what i said i i was the guy who invented that technology i'm the guy who drew that original does technology out on paper and got a patent for it. And he's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I sold it. One of my first companies as a kid, you know, because I didn't have the money to develop it. And in the 1980s, it would have been a tough technology to develop. But well, at least concept, you were wise enough to sell it. I didn't get, <laughs> I you know, never I, thought about approaching anyone with it. That idea. I just did that on my own. Yeah. And somebody, well, the person who did 
originally started, he didn't do so well either. He kind of let it go. But the but that's that's the other thing about creating assets. All right, the person who bought that from me got that. All right, mm -hmm. at a discount price, mm -hmm. used it, developed it, and have probably even pay, after paying R and D to develop and figure out how to make it work, I'll bet you they still have profited on the idea. Oh, I bet they are. Took somebody like me originally drawing it out on paper and putting it together in a patent for them to get it. And that's it. Some of you guys will go, well, yeah, you didn't make money. <laughs> no, but the technology wouldn't be in the world today if I didn't originally draw it out and sell it for pennies of what it's worth today. Mm -hmm. And some of you have that invention in your head and no one else is going to come up with the invention until you do. Yes. So They tell me the graveyard is full of millionaires. Who never used, never took their uh, ideas to, to the public, and so they're yeah. lost forever. Yeah, yeah. So, well, Juan, are you going to share slides today, or just you share with the? It's just me today. Uh, I'm not familiar with StreamYard enough. Had I thought about it, I would have approached you and said, "Tim, how can I do slides on this StreamYard?" But the next time, next I'll time. be ready. All right. Well, Luana, I'm going to let you go. The clock's yours for 15 minutes. We'll talk to you when you're you get. I'm, I'm in, in green room. Just call me if you need me. <laughs> All right. Well, if I stall, you know to run out here. <laughs> Thank you, Tim, for uh, inviting me to be a part of this today. I, I do. I love being. Hey, I love being the center of attention. That's no, no lie about it. I freely admit that. Uh, today, I'm going to share with you about journaling because I, I'm just in love with journaling. I've learned so much about it, and I just want everybody to journal. So I'm going to talk a little bit about getting started. And I know there's some people out there who think, ah, I hate writing. And it's probably not so much that you hate writing, but maybe you're not sure how to get started, what to write about. Uh, all the little things that pop up, you know, get in the way. Well, I'm going to tell you, let me give you three tips on how to get started. The first one, you probably have an album full of pictures. Or if you don't, you can always download pictures off the internet. However, take those pictures and write about them. You were at a picnic. Why were you at the picnic? What were you doing? What, who was there with you? What kind of food did you have? Just take those pictures and start writing. That's number one. Number two, how about some prompts? You know, you can get prompts for free. Just go on the internet and type in journal prompts or story prompts or any kind of prompts that you're looking for. And trust me, there are tons of them on the internet that you can get. And they help because they give you something to write about. They give you a start. It doesn't mean you have to stick with it. It just gives you a start so you can get going and then you can go in any direction you want. It's your prop. It's your journal. Do what you want. And finally, for the person who really does not want to write, record it. You know, we all have recorders on our phones today. No excuses accepted. And you can have those notes transcribed. And if you're like me, you're not good at trying to transcribe something that's on a recording. However, there are companies you can go to. There's Rev.com. I personally use Otter.ai because it not only transcribes, it records it, the whole thing for me. So I have it all in one package. And hey, the first 500 min minutes is free. You need for it in 500 minutes a month, then you got to pay for it. But hey, that's the nature of the game. All right. So let's now talk about some of the benefits that you can get from journaling. Now, I know there are many of you out there who think, ah, that's just writing a diary. Well, I heard someone give a very good explanation about diaries and journaling, and I absolutely love it. A diary is when you're a kid, a teenager. Journaling is when you're an adult. 
and you can write about uh, bigger and better things other than, oh, Johnny looked at me today and I just wanted to die because I wasn't in my best. <laughs> Forget about that stuff. We have more important things to talk about. For example, are you aware that journaling can boost your mood? If you really want to boost your mood, keep a gratitude journal and write all the things that you're grateful for. You know, you could do that once a day, once a week before you go to bed, once a month. There's no strict rule when it comes to journaling. You just have to do it. You have to decide how often you want to do it and what time of the day or night that you want to do it. But think about it. If you wrote down everything that you're grateful for, what a mood change that would be. It took me several years to realize just how many good things that I had had happened in my life. Because I was so busy dwelling on all of the bad things, I didn't think about the good things that had happened. And it includes my children. I mean, I consider my children a blessing. They may not be angels, but they love me. And that's what's most important. And I'm just so grateful that I have them in my life. Journaling can also increase your sense of well-being. Because as you write your thoughts, you start seeing issues from a new angle. I was listening to a internet, well, it was a Facebook talk show, and they were speaking about the some of the racial tension that we have in the country today. And both sides had good points. And what I, I thought, the whole problem is you both have good points, but what you need to do is sit down and be willing to listen to each other and look for some things that you can compromise on then we wouldn't have the racial tension that people are complaining about. I'm thankful that I'm not in that situation, but I know there are people who do live in that type of situation where they have to be concerned about things like that. But if you could just both sit down and talk about, because we all have the same wants and desires. We have the same needs. We need a roof over our head. We need food for our stomach. We want to take care of our children. We want the best for our children. So why are we arguing with one another? How about making you a kinder person? Now, <laughs> I'm going to use me as a as an example for that, because <laughs> years ago, what, I've always been a very quiet, shy person. In fact, I'm still a very quiet, shy person. I'm just speaking now, okay? But most of the time, I walked around with my head down. Of course, some of the times it was because I was reading a book. But I didn't really look people in the eye, didn't say anything to anyone. Just when they spoke to me, I was polite and spoke back. But in 1995, I decided to change that. So what I did was I made a decision. I would smile at everyone and speak to everyone. Now, in the beginning, I can only imagine how that must have looked because I had to rearrange my facial muscle muscles to smile instead of just kind of blah, you know? So I probably look kind of strange, but you know what? After a while, I really got where I liked it. I like speaking to people and just smiling. And I started to notice something. People would speak back. And whereas I didn't know how to start a conversation, because I smiled at someone and said hello, they would sometimes start a conversation with me. So it changed me. 
I don't know if I made a difference in their lives. I like to think that I did, but it certainly made a difference for me because I found I like smiling and I like speaking to people and I continue to do that even today. Now, another thing that writing can do or journaling, it can help improve your memory. Yes. I find that if I write something, I'll remember it longer than if I type it on a computer and read it. Uh, there's just something about, I don't know, the hand coordination and the brain, something that seems to work. I'll have to research that and find out how accurate I am on that. But I can tell you, it works for me. I can decide I'm going to talk about something and these are the key points I want to cover. Now, if I write those key points down as bullet points and maybe put a line or two to go with it, even if I don't have those notes in front of me or on a card that I can hold and look at, I'll remember what those bullet points were. I might not remember the lines exactly, but since it's something that I'm, I'm familiar with, it's okay. I can talk about it. And people think I'm doing a great job because I don't have notes in front of me. So think about that when you are journaling. I just enjoy journaling. And I, as, as you get to know me, you'll find that it really is a very important thing for me. I want to share uh, briefly another story of so why I like journaling. When my son, my firstborn, uh, was five years old and he started in kindergarten, I wanted to give him something special. And so I gave him a book and it was called School Days. Now it wasn't just a book. You might say it was sort of a journal. This is the book that I gave to him. I gave that book to him and then forgot all about it because as other children came along, I had to pay attention to them, but he was the only one I gave that book to. And I'm so glad I did. He kept this book up every year through the 12th grade. He put something in there, a picture, a card, something to remind me of who he was. He might put the, a report card, copy of his report card, little notes that he wrote on the side. And it's just, it's just a very special book for me. It's special because I lost my son and I didn't realize he, as I said, I forgot about this book, but he took this with him when he went into the military. So when they sent his personal effects home to me, this book was there. I can now relive all those years all over again when I want. And it doesn't make me sad or upset. I smile because looking at a picture of him when he was in first went to kindergarten and I can remember how proud he was. And after taking him to kindergarten for about a week, he informed me that he could walk by himself. He didn't need me to take him anymore. He knew the way. But being a mom and my first child, while he may have felt that he could do it on his own, I kind of followed behind him at a distance. That's true that in those days, we didn't think about people grabbing your kids off the street the way we do today. So that wasn't the fear. I was just afraid that somebody might try to bully him or whatever. But I learned that he was capable of taking care of himself. So after a week of following him, I decided it was no longer necessary for me to do that. But I have some fun memories in here. And I am just so glad that he chose to fill this book out for me, even though he didn't realize that's what he was doing. I'm sure he... He probably planned on having this for his own children someday to share with them 
what he was like from kindergarten to high school and, and then into the military. But I am appreciative that I have it. Now, how about you? Why don't you start a journal and write some things down? Why not create a legacy, a lasting legacy for your family? Share stories of, of wonderful things that happened in your life, some adventures you went on, as well as the bad times. You know what I enjoy is every now and then I run across some writings that I did. Because of, before getting involved with journaling, I really did used to write things down. Sometimes I threw it away, but a lot of times I just kind of shoved it away and then didn't think any more about it. And every now and then I run across a tablet that I've written in and I read something that I, I wrote down. And some of the things that I look at, I think, wow, I really let something as silly as that get to me. I'm so glad that's not me today. Or I worried about something that was useless. That makes sense. Now, at the time, it made perfect sense to me to be worried about it. Uh, but I was grateful that I wrote about it because looking back at it, I could laugh at it. It didn't mean anything, but it got it out of my system. That's the great thing about writing stuff down. It gets it out of your system because when you hold things in, it can lead to health disorders and sometimes even mental disorders. And you don't want that in your life. You want to enjoy every day of your life, even more than just thinking about yourself. Think about all your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, all of them who can read about you. And who knows, maybe something you go through that you conquered and you tell how you did it. It could help someone further down in your family, someone that you'll never meet. And if you choose to turn that into a book, and I would be more than happy to help you in doing that, you can now help so many more people because everyone who picks up that book and reads it will take a nugget from it that they can benefit from in their lives. So my thing for you that if you journal, Make it a habit. Discipline yourself to set a time. And as I said earlier, it doesn't have to be every single day. It's good if you can, even if you only write a sentence or two. But you don't have to write every single day. You can write every two or three days, once a week or bi-weekly or monthly. The main thing is to get things off your chest. Write about things that you're truly grateful for, great things that are happen, the bad things that are happen, and how you handle that. You, there's all kinds of journals that you can have. There are prayer journals. There are goal setting journals. There's creativity journals. There's for everything that there is. There's a journal for it, and they all have a place in your life. But if you're like me, I don't want a whole lot of journals. Just one. I can write all everything I need in that one journal. And if it's something that I particularly feel I might want to go back to, I can put a marker there so that I can flip to that easily without having to go through page by page to find it. But journaling is a big help. Now, if you don't journal... I'm encouraging you, please, start journaling if for no other reason than to boost your mood, increase your sense of well-being, help reduce some of those anxieties that you sometimes feel, make you a kinder person, and to increase your memory. That's just a few of the things that journaling can do for you. 
have you tested on the mental health things that it can do for you or how it can help you to achieve your goals in life, make you the success that you've always dreamed of being? So if you haven't started journaling, please, you've got computers, you've got recorders, paper and pen, still good, and start journaling. It will make such a difference in your, in your life. One thing that really helped you when it comes to journaling is that you learn how to, it, it, once you start journaling and learn to keep it up effectively, it will help you in your everyday life because it creates a habit and it's things that you can keep private unless you just want to share it. You don't have to. But most important, it gets it out of your system and makes you a better person. So if you'd like to learn more, please come over to courage to live your dream.net and sign up. I'd love to help you. And thank you, Tim, for inviting me here. Yeah. Got to love it, Luana. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing about journaling. And uh, yeah, I think you should t title this speech, uh, you know, how my son's journal saved my life. That's a good. That's a good title. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write that's it down book right and, there and process that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it really, you know, it really did because I was so broken up, and the worst part was that I was going through this, and I was very resentful of my family and friends mm -hmm. because even though I was this quiet person. Everybody thought of me as being this strong person who could handle anything, including my husband. And I was resentful because they were coming to me to comfort them. And I'd go off by myself sometimes. I go, what's wrong with them? Don't they know this is my firstborn child that I've lost? I need some comfort. You know? mm -hmm. And when I finally went through his things and I found this, it was a big help because it meant he was still with me, still with me in this book, and still with me in my heart. So yes, I highly, highly recommend journaling. I, you know, I, and I never would have thought of it, you know what I mean, as, as a thing, because I just thought blogging, for me, blogging was that easy, you know what I mean? It wasn't mm -hmm. a journal, it was just a blog, but that's it. Some of us have to, it's all what we find, and some of us, it's journaling that's gonna save our lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, a journal is going to actually be, you know, uh, something that's going to be uh, a legacy. that's going to be meant for us for years to come. And some of it's going to be something that saves a future generation. So absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, well, Luana, I, I, I love having you in our mastermind or inner circle and appreciate everything you do. All right. And thanks for sharing with us today. Well, thank you for inviting me to be a part of this. And thank you for having these programs. I really enjoy them. Ah, uh, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do another one next month. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Luana. I'll talk to you You're soon. You're welcome. So that, ladies and gentlemen, wraps up our last speaker of the day. Luana Parker, thank you so much. Great member, as I said. She's a member of our Inner Circle Mastermind. All right. And uh, as as well as a great uh, added to this community, we thank her for being every, everything that she does to, for us. So speaking of mastermind, I'm going to let you guys know that uh, if you are, right, are interested in joining our mastermind or finding out more about what we do all right, or how we help people, here is the link to it. The Simple Easy Marketing Mastermind. It's timgillette.com slash mastermind. We'll run you through the details about if you have any information or need more information or want to actually book a call with me. All right, email me info at timgillette.com and we'll book you a spot for you. But the mastermind is available. It is an inner circle mastermind where we actually have a bunch of things that we help people do. Uh, it is part one on one call, part, you know, group calls, part uh, um, community. All right. As well as you are then being prepped to then speak at events like this. Um, if you uh, thought, man, this great, this, this is a, event, a great event, man. I, I would love to share this event out. How would you like to get paid to share this event out? You can do that by going to timgillette.com slash affiliates, slash affiliates, sign up for our affiliate program. Again, this is a membership to get in here. It is $20 membership for the virtual, 
10 of that 20 goes to a charity every month. Some of the people are actually here in what is called a VIP. In other words, if you bought a ticket to any of my blog and video cons, my past events, anything of my alive events, all right, that actually also gets you access to these virtual events for a lifetime. No matter what happens, all right, your access to it for a lifetime. But you can actually, in the affiliate program, share with your friends and say, hey, this is a virtual event that happens every month. And literally, this is a practical place to get practical information, simple and easy for you to build your business and build it right. That being said, I did not, on my earlier thing, give a call to action. It's because I knew I was going to close it out today. You can go. We're going to start a new class, all right, for you to build a funnel. Maybe you want to build a virtual event. Maybe you want to do a book. Maybe you want to do something that gets people to your podcast. You do that by building, building a funnel system using emails, using web pages, using thank you pages, and using sequence, all right, as well as shopping cart type stuff. We are going to run a free class, simpleeasyfunnels.com. You're welcome to join, but if you got to get the notifications of when we're doing the next class, so go to simpleeasyfunnels.com, all right, put your name and email address in there, all right, it'll put you in the sequence of what's going to happen with our next set of classes, simpleeasyfunnels.com. That being said, our next event will be July 10th, July 10th, where we're going to talk about email marketing, why you still need an email list, why email lists matter. Why you can't just build it on social media, why you've got to start building a little email list and start building a community, or you will be left behind. And it is now getting more important than ever before to have an email list. Those people who have an email list are the ones that started to thrive during this pandemic. Those people who were just going, no, I'm gonna build it on, I'm gonna build it with this tool, I'm gonna to build it with this tool, I'm gonna build it with this tool. And they were just playing games with all of these fancy tools online. They never put it down into a system. I actually, this week, or, or two weeks ago, bought a set, new set, a new set, it was two weeks ago, I bought a new set of, of computer glasses. These are for like gaming glasses, and these have a more of a glare on them, so I don't wear them when I'm doing these events, but these are gaming glasses that I bought. I went on the website to buy them. They're from a company called Gunners. I get an email now. I'm on their email list. So I get an email of everything that goes on with Gunners and how to actually use my thing, how to actually, uh, you know, get deals, email. Here's a, here's a coupon code if you want to buy another pair, things like that. They are building an email list. They have some of the most technology out there for eyeglasses, yet they have an email list. You need to have an email list, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't, you are going to be left behind. Again, in 2010, when I started my business, at least two dozen people, if not more, told me, you don't, need an e you don't need a website. You can do it on social media. You don't need an email list. You can do it on social media. You don't need an email list. You can do it on YouTube. You don't need to build a podcast. You can do it on Blab. I've heard Blab, YouTube, uh, Instagram, all of these things. 11 years later, I'm still in business because I started building an email list, a website. And many of those people don't even, I knew social media experts who didn't have a website, who came and went, don't even know where they're at right now, don't even know if they're helping people anymore. They're gone. They're off the radar. They're not on social media anymore. And they were social media experts. But you go look at some of the top social media experts, they also have a website. They also have an email list. The top YouTubers, yes, they get subscribers on YouTube, but they also have an email list. We're going to talk about that next month. If you have done something unique to build your YouTube list, go to simpleeasyevents.com. It'll probably refresh here in the next uh, 20 to 30 minutes, and it'll refresh to the July 10th event. If you've done something to build your email list that is unique, all right, you have to have done it and have some numbers. Go to there, click the speaker button, and apply to speak. We'll take speaker submissions up until July 1st. On July 1st, we will close the submissions, and then we will actually announce who our speakers are for the next event on July 3rd, and we'll have our event on July 10th. I'm hoping to see you next month. I'm going to keep doing these events, and I don't care if two people show up or 15,000 show up. Here's why. I learned build a system, seek to be disciplined in the system, and always keep building new assets to build the system and discipline better. And I'm going to keep doing these events to help you. 
We've helped many people over the years, all right, who went to gurus, went to big names, went to the people who were on TVs and on big stages and talk about how they, you know, multiply their stuff, you know, 20, 50, 75 fold. And they found out that the reason they're multiplying by the folds that they're multiplying is because they're just taking their money. And they came here and got the information they needed and actually went out and started building a business, building a community and getting results. I will forever keep doing this because I want people to get results. I don't want to brag about how many sales I made. I want to brag about your results. And that is the reason we will keep doing these events. I'm Tim Gillette with Simple Easy Marketing, Simple Easy Events. I thank you for showing up today. All right. And I hope to see you again next month when we do this again, helping you build an email list next month. In the meantime, tell your friends, get more people to come out here. If you got something out of this today, write a blog post about it and tag our event. I'm Tim Gillette. I'll see you next month.